Welcome to Dolan with Sid Meier's Civilization 4 Colonization Modified, We the People. This mod actually makes the Civ 4 Colonization remake of the original Colonization not suck. Like I still enjoy the remake, but this mod is absolutely amazing. I'm going to try to keep this video short. The music that you're hearing is the music from the original Colonization. They have their own special music in this mod from a variety of people that is also really really good. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some quick highlights of the mod and let you know what's going on with it. First thing is that the number of colonies that you can play is enormous. You can also play not only huge maps but gigantic maps. I don't recommend playing gigantic maps in the most recent version because you'll end up reaching a like memory allocation failure probably and you won't be able to get past that and you'll crash. You probably want to stick with huge. Supposedly in the upcoming We The People 4.1, this is like 4.0.1. It's not 4.1, it's almost there. They'll have that in maybe a couple months. I don't know. You can talk to them actually if you want. They have a Discord. You'll be able to play gigantic maps as well as massive maps. So let's just pick one. You have not four colonies, but eight potential colonies that you could play. There's still the old four French, English, Spanish, and Dutch, but now there's the Portuguese, which were always left out, as well as the Danish, the Swedish, and the Russians. That's the major difference. They have their own special bonuses and stuff like that. I definitely think that you should have a good time checking them out. I'm not going to go through all of them, but I am going to load up a save that I have to show you what the game looks like. I love their quotes, by the way. Like this quote in particular is nice. They have some really good loading quotes, and they also have a special flavor for when you start the game that the remake of Colonization does not have. So this is what it looks like. This is a 1656 AD empire that I have. Notice here that my largest city has 46 people in it. You can get much bigger than that if you really want to. If I open up this city, you're probably going to be surprised by what you see. So in the original Colonization and then the remake, you only had like six raw goods and this one all the things that you see along the bottom those are raw goods manufactured goods some goods are manufactured from other manufactured goods and to be honest it can be kind of overwhelming but there's a good thread that can help you out with this on the Civ Fanatics forum i'll show you how to navigate to it so if you're on the Civ Fanatics forum that's forums.civfanatics or just just google Civ Fanatics you go down to the Civ 4 section, which is right here. You click Civ 4 Colonization, and then you go to Civ 4 Colonization Creation and Customization, and then you go to Project and Mod Development. You go to We the People. This is the subform for all of it. This is the guide to We the People 4.0, the second one from the top. You can click that. And this tells you about all sorts of things in the mod. There's a huge number of possibilities. I, for one, am a gigantic fan of having a bunch of possibilities. And this thread actually talks about like 4.1. They're actually going to make it so that there are replacements for specific experts in the game. So every colony will have a unique national unit. Like the Danes here in 4.1 will have a expert fisherman replacement, which is even better than a regular fisherman. So that you have a lot of variety in what you want to do. So do keep in mind that the version of Excel is already representing the upcoming 4.1 version, just so you know. The most recent update was July 19th that they've edited the Excel. Most of what you need to know can be found in the subforum. There's also a very good Civilopedia or Colonopedia in this game as well. But I'm going to continue showing you some more highlights and special things about We The People so that you can actually learn how it works now if you want to keep watching. What I'm going to start with first is actually moving around the ocean. So notice here that the ocean is not plain and boring and basic. There's a bunch of variety here. This cloud right here, this is favorable winds. You don't get slowed down moving through favorable winds. There are actually promotions that can double your speed when you go through a favorable wind. The defense bonus of a favorable wind is negative though, so you don't want to end your turn favorable wind. There's also unfavorable wind, which, which costs 3 movement. You don't want to move through there if you can help it. And there's also storms, which cost 4 movement and damage your unit as it moves through the storm. 
you should kind of be careful with the storms they cost enough movement that your ships generally if they're like automated or going somewhere they won't always go through it but if they're moving somewhere and they end up ending their turn in that storm the civ 4 ai is not intelligent enough to not do that so you kind of got to be careful about that however storms tend to not be as common near the coast in my experience but they do still exist of course you also should be aware that there are different kinds of coast like what you see here this blue coast that's kind of more blue than the surrounding blue is that this is a shallow coast only certain ships can go into shallow coast things like galleons cannot go into shallow coast a caravel can do it a carrick can do it small ships can go through shallow coast there's also reefs that some ships can't go through so whenever you found your first settlement try to be certain that you don't found it in such a way that you found it with no regular coast you want regular coast otherwise your ship won't be able to get in there are canals in this game that you can build but big ships can't go through canals you also want to be aware that there are different kinds of ocean in the sense that there's coral reefs that are kind of hard to see. Most of these really bright blue patches are reefs, but they don't always line up perfectly. So it doesn't always make sense where they're at. So you want to be careful when you're moving around. And moving through a coral reef costs 3 movement. They also have a minus 50% defense bonus. Being an unfavorable wind in storms gives you a plus 50% defense bonus, but you don't want to be in a storm if you can help it. Let's go to Europe real quick and show you what the, that screen looks like. Notice here that it doesn't look like trash, like in the remake of Colonization. Let's take a look at some ships that we can buy. And these are some of the specialists that are available in the game. As you can see, there are a whole, whole bunch of specialists. You can do all sorts of things in this game. And I'll talk about some of the goods in a couple minutes. Anyway, we've got caravels, flutes, caraval redondas, carracks, schooners, all sorts of things. Tons and tons of different options. One quick notice for you is that a galleon cannot carry regular people. It can only carry goods or treasures. That's a change they made to make galleons less important for transporting regular people and to give more emphasis to other their ships. There's also a ton of different kinds of military units now. There's no longer just soldier, cannon, artillery, etc. Now there's infantry soldier, there's line infantry, there's light artillery, heavy artillery, there's dragoons, cavalrymen. They're all different. They all do different things. There's even town guards, which are like basic defensive units as well. There is also, some people won't like it, but it is historically true and it has game mechanics. There is slavery in the game. The, this is a African slave. They are almost as effective as a expert fisherman under certain circumstances that is specific to having special units called slave hunters, slave overseers, etc. Like right here, my African people are doing 11.64 food. The fishermen are still better, like a lot better. They have 15.84 food. And you can actually get these slaves from the second market that you can go to, which is actually Africa. You can sail to Africa and you can buy various things here, such as some expert cotton planters, indigo planters, coffee planters, etc. that you can sometimes get trained, but you can just buy some of them from Africa. There's also mulattoes, which are like a mixture of Hispanic, well, I guess you'd say like a mixture of white since Hispanic is basically white, like Spanish are basically still white people with some Arabic mixed in, and Native American. They're actually classified as indentured servants, by the way. The Everybody has like a social status right below their ethnicity. And here is a place that you can buy the slave hunters, slave overseers. You can also buy what are called slave barks. And slave barks are necessary with some other ships to sail to Port Royal. And Port Royal is actually the third market, which is the pirate market. Here you can buy other things, like expert tobacco planters, Europa planters, sugar planters, cocoa, rice, cassava. You can buy buccaneers, which are the land pirate. 
You can buy a pirate cutter, a pirate frigate, a smuggling ship. There's tons and tons of different options. Let's talk about the differences between founding colonies in regular colonization and in We the People. So in We the People, you actually need to make a unit have a settler profession, like a, it's not called pioneer, I think it's called settler. If we look at food here, if we hover over the food icon, it says that 22 food is required to equip settlers. I don't know if that's the base requirement or not, but you need food to equip settlers, you also need lumber, you should need tools, yes you need tools, and I believe you need horses too. Yeah, you need horses as well. If you ever want to know what something requires, you can go to the Colonopedia, you can go to Professions, and this is all the professions that they have in the game. If we click Settler here, or hover over Settler, you can see in the top right, we need food, lumber, horses, and tools. You must have those in order to found new colonies. You cannot just found a new colony willy-nilly with just anybody. They have to be equipped specifically to found colonies, which in my opinion, I like that. I like that that makes sense. That's also true of wagon trains. You can't just make wagon trains from nothing. Wagon trains require horses, they require sail cloth specifically, and they also require tools. It can be kind of hard to tell what the icons are, but you can learn them over time by taking a look at the goods themselves. The icons should be almost exactly the same. And you can also hover over it, like this is sailcloth, this is tools. I'm not sure if you can hover over all the icons, but usually you can. There's also different kinds of wagon trains. There are ox carts, which are weaker wagon trains, they only move one. There's wagon trains that can move people. They're not called wagon trains, they're called um, stage coaches. Those can move actual people. There's a bigger wagon train called a trek. It can hold four goods instead of two. Since we're talking about wagon trains, let's just show right here, there's different kind of roads right here. Right here, I've got a plastered country road on this mine right here. Above it is a regular road. There are different types of roads that are upgrades. Regular road is twice speed. Plastered road is four times faster. There's another road that's three times faster. Coming back to colonies real quick, when you found a colony, you can't just add people forever. There's actually issues that you have to deal with. You have to deal with law and order. I have a judge here that is producing law. The colony produces crime based on population size, and it also produces crime based on how full the storage is. We have a plus 30% modifier because we have pretty full storage based on the right hand side over here, the city storage. You also have happiness in the city. If your city is unhappy, then people start like revolting or they start stealing your money. Well, not stealing your money. They'll steal your money if your crime is greater than law, but they'll revolt, they'll get unhappy. There'll be all sorts of negatives, but there's also bonuses for being happy. Like immigration from Europe is faster, the population grows faster, slaves and criminals become free faster, etc. There's a bunch of options right here. You also have health. You gotta worry about the health of your people. I have a renowned medic here working in the medical office. He helps keep everybody happy. As long as you stay healthy and happy, you get bonuses. Like if you're at 10 health, the highest that you can be is 10 health. As far as I know, you get plus 10% production bonuses to everything. So you want to stay at 10 health because that helps you in every single way. You can actually end up with kind of a health spiral if you're not careful because if you go negative health, you start losing bonuses and you start losing production. So you always want to be careful. This number right here is how much you're net on health. I'm net two, which means I can add, I'm not sure exactly how many colonists, maybe six, maybe four, something like that before I start going negative. There's also harbor space. You can't have as many ships as you want without space for them. You just have to move them around the colonies if you don't have space. You also have barrack space. This is space for soldiers. You can't have an infinite number of soldiers standing in a colony. It doesn't work. I love the variety. I'm really autistic. I'm not saying that all autistic love this, but I, for one, I love supply chains, production chains. And for me, this mod is like absolutely amazing. It's also dealt with like all the issues of the remake of colonization. 
and I feel like this mod is basically what Condensation could have been. They would not have ever made this many goods in their remake just because it can be overwhelming. Like, absolutely, it can be overwhelming. But I like it. I like the variety. For instance, let's talk about just cloth real quick. So cloth comes from cotton first. So cloth cotton is right here. You convert cotton into cloth, and then you can convert indigo and cloth into colored cloth. There's also wool. You can turn wool into wool cloth. You can then take, I believe, colored cloth and make something like everyday clothes, if I remember correctly. Let's go check the Colonopedia. Ah, so everyday clothes are made from colored wool cloth. There's just there's so many things that you can do in the game, it's really impressive. There's also a really big thing in this game, there's actually a domestic market. Your own population will buy the goods that you produce. In here in Fort Dillon, I have fruit brandy stored up, and my population wants to buy 7 units of fruit brandy every single turn, and they'll pay 17 gold for every unit. That means that you bypass taxes, and you get money from your domestic people. We could sell that fruit brandy in Europe for 7 gold, or Africa for 10 gold, or Port Real for 11 gold. Different markets have different prices. They'll even pay 24 gold for every unit of luxury coats that I make, which have a demand of 4 for every turn. And when you give them what they want, that makes them happier up here. So they have all those bonuses that actually increases their domestic market profits even more when they're happy. I also want to mention this mod fixes the problem of crosses becoming irrelevant as the game progresses. There's actually a maximum of crosses that are needed per unit, and after that the crosses will not increase for every immigrant. So on normal speed, it is 400. That means that firebrand preachers right here are actually useful. So you do actually want a cross industry, even later on in the game. Let's point out how the horses work. This is a rancher. He's not working at a stable inside the colony. He's working at a specific tile, and he's generating horses based on the horses that we have in the colony. There's actually a ranch built right here. See his little ranch. You have horses, you've got cattle, etc. Different terrain actually allows you to raise different types of livestock effectively. There's a bunch of different livestock in the game. There's chickens, there's goose, or geese, there's sheep, goats, pigs, cows, horses. They all have their own things that they do that are different. And you can butcher those livestock to produce meat or to produce different types of goods. When you want to start building a military, there's actually not just guns, there's blades, there's guns, there's cannons, and there's also gunpowder. Gunpowder, by the way, is actually not that hard to make. I do recommend selling it because it sells for a lot of money in Europe as well as Africa and Port Royal. It's a really good product. You only need to chop lumber and then you need to convert the lumber into charcoal and then the charcoal into gunpowder. And it works pretty effectively. It's a very good product. This is the St. Lawrence River, I believe, and there's actually large rivers in the game, in the modified game at least. Only certain units can cross a large river. Natives, I believe, can do it. Scouts can do it. And there's also places like a ford here where you can walk across. Like, yeah, it doesn't look very good, but this is a modified version of Civ. Not all the mods look that good. A lot of things look good in this game. Well, this mod. A lot of the things in the mod look good, but not everything. But that's okay. You know, it's more about gameplay than it is about graphics. And I'll let you know that the natives actually regenerate money, so you can actually consistently trade with them. Instead of trading with them just a couple times and then never being able to again. To get across a large river, you can also build a river ferry station, which I built right here. And this allows my units to move across a river. That's specifically for a large river. There are also regular rivers still, and there are some buildings that actually do require access to rivers. A big, big point that some people get a little bit annoyed with is that a lot of buildings now, they require not just tools, but they also require stone, which is right here, and clay. Stone is acquired from mountains, usually. You can just mine them from any mountain. Clay is specifically acquired from certain tiles, such as a wetland hills, 
Now let's pull out of this. I need to show you something specific. So unfortunately, the random map generator that comes with We The People is not capable of generating the tiles that give you clay. You actually have to kind of download a specific map script. They haven't fixed it yet in that particular update. The map script that is available right now with the mod doesn't actually generate the tiles for clay. There are a bunch of pre-made maps that have all the resources, but if you want to do like a random map, you are actually going to need this fairweather.py and you can find it in the discord let me see if i can find a place for it somewhere else oh uh, yeah so here we go so on the we the people github and they have a github where you can get more updated versions or you can at least you can compile more updated versions the most recent release is 4.0.2 they're working on 4.1 so you go to private maps and then you can scroll down to fairweathertweakx.py. You can click that, I believe. And then you should be able to click this little download button right here, download a raw file. You need to go to wherever you've got your save of the colonization and the mod. All right, for me, it's actually under my D drive. So it's simple colonization. You go to mods, we the people. You can go to private maps, and then you wanna just put it right here and probably copy over whatever is there. And then what you can do is you can run that map script and that updated map script is actually gonna have some slight issues. So what I can do is I can go to play now, I can go to click whatever I want. And you have different leaders by the way, not just one leader per colony. Every single colony has at least two leaders or exactly two leaders it looks like. Fair weather tweak X, it simulates earth-like plate tectonics, geostrophic and monsoon winds and rainfall. These settings are unchanged. Now on the con and we the people, you actually have one plot radius or two plot radius, not just the fat cross. This is actually two plot radius. That means that you can do two diagonally as well. I think the mod is balanced around two plots. You should probably play with two plots on at least standard and up size maps. I think it's really designed for two plots. I recommend two plots. You can do one plot if you want, but it's, it's meant for two plots. Like the latitude and the distance to Europe are unchanged. The land allocation is unchanged, but here you have land regularity. I don't know exactly what this means. I think it has to do with like, if it's like wavy or like straight and like a square. I think if you go up, it makes it more like a square. I'm not sure exactly. This is just an issue with the map script not being designed for this version and having issues because there's also a large river prevalence that has got missing like a, a text key. That's okay, it still works. Same thing with the length of the river. I think this is gonna be shorter for rivers and this will be longer for rivers. And this is the land percent. You have less land percent if you go up, more land percent if you go down. All right, so now we start it, it's gonna have a little error come up. It says here, file, Fairweather Tweak X line, etc., has a issue where it can't access the world size massive. In 4.1, they'll have world size massive. There's no issue with this, just let it be. And there you go. There's also goody huts in the ocean, by the way, so you can check those out and get some stuff. And here is actually the first story that you'll get. You'll get a lot of other stories as you play the mod. And you can read this if you'd like to do so. And then there's the second part. And here's another one too. You get a little special picture and a little story as well. There's a lot more things to the mod. For instance, there's improvements that actually get bigger over time as you work them. You start off with a regular farm and it becomes a large farm. You start off with a regular lumberjack camp or a regular camp or whatever you call it, it becomes a big one. You have mines still, of course. You also have different kinds of places such as trapper huts, which are specific for fur production. This mod is absolutely fantastic. There's plantations instead of farms. I love it. That's pretty much everything that there is to talk about. Like, not everything that there is to talk about, but I don't want to make the video too long. So there you go. Give it a shot. Download it. Uh, if you want to do the random generation, you need to get the updated script. But there are a bunch of different really good pre-made maps. There's Central America, Colonial America, East Coast, South America, 
There's all sorts of different things that you can pick, as well as some maps that were randomized and that were edited to have the resources that are needed, such as clay. Clay is the main thing that can be missing, but the premium maps are pretty good. If you want the random map, just head on to the GitHub and check it out. In the Discord, there's also plenty of people that will help you if you want to learn. And you can access their Discord at the Discord chat thread, which is in the We the People subthread, well, subform. You can go in here, and then you can click here to join. And I'm in there too. I'm known by a different name though. I'm known as Dwarf Martyred, and that's one of my names that I go by on the internet. But yeah, people talk about uh, mod, they have all sorts of things going on, GitHub announcements where they talk about their commits to GitHub and their modifications the modders do. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. Oh, and uh, by the way, when you first start a colony, you only start with like a camp and a little carpenter shop. You don't start with anything else. You start with basically nothing in this game and you go from there. I won't give you a whole bunch of tips and tricks for how to play the game. I think that a lot of fun is had in discovering how all this works because it's really cool how you can have such a variety of things to do. But I've taught you most everything that you need to know to get started. I will say that you might want to keep some money on hand because certain quests do ask for a lot of money. So do keep that in mind as you develop. Of course, it is best to spend as much as you can to make as much as you can in many cases. Here's the base terrains, for instance. Just, I forgot to mention those, but here you go. There's a whole bunch of different options. Here's a bunch of the buildings in the game. There's a whole, whole bunch. There's all sorts of different types of shipyards. You have to actually make ropes and sail cloth from hemp. And the Founding Fathers, by the way, they don't suck. They're actually good. They're not terrible, like in the remake. So check them out too. So that is kind of an introduction to We the People. I hope you check it out. I really love the game. It can be overwhelming at first, but I think it's really rewarding to play. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, Leaving a like would help other people to also find the video and then potentially find We The People. If you'd like to see more, you can always subscribe. I might be making a playthrough of this, I'm not sure exactly. This does take longer to play than the regular colonization. We'll have to see. But other than that, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.